Today I'm going to show you a ball turning fixture I built several years ago uh, to use on my one manual lathe. Uh, but before I get to that I want to tell you why I actually built a fixture like that. What you're seeing here is part of an ultralight aircraft airframe I've been working on now for several years. And the reason I built the fixture was for these uh, connectors you see here. Now these connectors are made of a solid piece of 6061 T6 aluminum which is a, a grade that's used quite a bit in general aircraft and you'll notice how the profile at the bottom there is convex. What I did is I took a solid piece of this aluminum and put it in a lathe and I turned a 1.75 inch diameter ball on the end and then I milled each end here down to a 1 inch width and then bored a hole through the center plus a couple thousandths clearance so it would fit on this tube and then reamed out, drilled and reamed out this end for lightness. So that's what I built the ball making uh, fixture for. So I want to show you that and actually how you turn a ball and a lathe with it. Now I'm going to show you the setup too which is a little bit involved but if you stick with it you'll get to see how I um, how it actually forms a ball on the lathe. So I think it's pretty interesting and I figured you guys would like to see it too. So let's go take a look at that fixture. Here's a better look at the ball turner. Uh, this is all made out of uh, just mild steel. Uh, that's all one piece. I used, I used a wire EDM to cut out this C-frame right here. And then this part here, I'll show you why I made that out of three different pieces. And of course the ball here on the end was uh, I made this entire piece here in the handle, but I didn't make this. And of course, I made this ball on here and then attached it to the end. I thought that would be a nice representation of what the entire device is for. There's a couple of ways of approaching turning a ball on a lathe. Uh, and this is the, the first approach here, where you use a solid piece of material. And you can see right now, it's kind of a waste of material. If you're planning on cutting the ball off of here, you just wasted this entire uh, piece of material. Now what I showed you on the ultralight those pieces actually look like this so I needed to have this material so I didn't have a choice. Uh, most of the time when you're making a ball though you're gonna end up cutting it off right here slicing it off with a parting tool or bandsaw or whatever and if you were making a, a, a bunch of these you would actually want to use a removable arbor which would be this piece down here with internal threads it would allow you to uh, screw on a piece of material, carve out the ball, and then unscrew it, and then attach another piece of stock, and then repeat the process. And then once you have your depth set on this and your tool settings, you can very quickly change out a piece of blank stock and make you know half a dozen of these in no time. The, the, most of the time in machining is spent on setup, as any machinist will tell you. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to be making one of these. And it's going to look like this right here. What I'm going to start with is a blank like this out of aluminum. And then this piece, I will be carving the, the ball out of it. Next thing I'm going to do now is set some clearance between uh, the back face of where the ball is going to be and the face of the chuck jaws. Uh, just give me enough clearance so the cutting tool doesn't end up hitting these at uh, a few hundred RPM. I made this ball turner so it could fit in to just about any uh, tool holder on a uh, dovetail type tool post. Okay, now I need to adjust the, um, the height of the cutting tool here. And I gotta try to get it as much exactly on center as I can with the center of the part here. Okay, that looks pretty good. One of the things that makes this uh, radius turner a little bit unique is that uh, you can adjust this tool to get more clearance in the back of the part. 
So, let's say whenever you're cutting a radius here, whenever you follow through to cut the back end, you see the, the problem's obvious here. You can collide with the chuck jaws. Uh, so what I did was I made this entire tool post so it can rotate to the left or the, to the right. In this case, it would be the left. So the tool can get to the back of the part before the rest of the fixture does. And that allows you to keep uh, this part right here, this part, from getting so close to the chuck jaws. It's a big safety thing. So you'll see here, um, I can bring that tool right in to the back of the part. And you'll see I'm still, I still have a lot of clearance between the chuck jaws and the entire fixture. I have about three-eighths of an inch there before it hits. So I know I'm a safe distance. I could actually bring this part in probably another hundred thousandths or so. But I'm just going to leave it there for now. Now what I need to do is adjust the clearance uh, to the chuck jaws and also set the radius of the cutter. I have to disassemble this slightly. This top handle comes off. Exposes that thrust washer. And this thrust washer, by the way, is uh, nothing more than a piece of polyethylene off. It's a yellow milk jug, in other words. So, poor man's Teflon, they call it. So, so uh, once I do that, I can come in here it gives me clearance for the wrench here to loosen this up. Loosen up the top of the tool post. I can loosen the bottom one. Just a little bit. Once I have the clearance set, I go ahead and tighten up this tool post again. Okay, now the clearance is set. Okay, next I need to set the the tool radius from the center. Now being the ball is supposed to end up at 1.5 it's actually going to be slightly under because uh, I had to remove the extrusion marks here, the mill marks. So anyway uh, I have to to get a 1.5 inch ball I need to set a, a 750 thousandths radius. 750 thousandths of course being half of 1.5 and to do that I'm going to set the uh, the cutting tool radius the tangent of this tool has to be 750 thousandths away from the center of rotation of this fixture. So that would be the center of these pins right here. So what I'm going to do is take a ground rod where these pins are at and set this with a gauge block. Now I don't have a, a gauge pin as long as I need for this, so I'm going to use a half inch reamer because it's precision ground to a uh, half inch. So what I do, I just slide these pins out of the way. Like that. And down through there like that. I just snug it up so it doesn't fall through the bottom side. Okay, now I have a good reference point. Now, the one thing you got to keep in mind is that uh, I can't get to the exact center of rotation because this is half inch. So what I have to do is take the depth I want, which is 750 thousandths, and sub subtract the radius of the pin, which is 250 thousandths. That leaves us with a half inch, or 500 thousandths. I need to slide that nose up against that gauge block until uh, the gauge block until I have no movement in the gauge block and then tighten it up a little bit like that and just slide that gauge block out of there and then continue to tighten up this tool bit at this point now we are exactly 750 thousandths from the tangent of that uh, radius on that tool to the center line of pivot on this fixture. Now what I gotta do is remove this pin and put the original pins back in place.
replace the thrust washer and the top handle. Tighten that up as well. Okay, now everything's set. Now that I have that, I need to find the front end of the part. I need to know where my front stop is here. Now you'll notice that being this travels in a circular motion, you're going to have a high spot. So I'm going to find that high spot and touch off on the front of this part. Okay, now that that's set, I'm going to set a stop on the carriage here so it can't travel any further in than what I have it set at right now. Now, bring the tool out and then bring it back to the, where the stop was at. Alright, at this point I can start cutting out the circle. And that is how I make a ball on a manual lathe. Now this thing's supposed to be inch and a half in diameter, so let's uh, see what it is. For the sake of simplicity, I'll use calipers first here. Right on the money with that one. But this would be a more accurate say right here. Uh, so what do we have? 1.499, so we're thousandths under. Now. Keep in mind, I said I had to take a little bit under to remove the manufacturing marks on the uh, outer diameter. So, um, yeah, it was it was measuring before I did this. It was measuring 1.503 or 502. So once I removed that, I'm a thousandths under. So let's see if it's an actual sphere. Yep, thousandths under. I hope you guys found that informative. So if you did, give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel and I will be seeing you next video.